I needed a little um, press to press some grapes for uh, wine that I'm making. And uh, this is just a little video about how I made that press from some scrap that I had laying around. Here you see I started by cutting some stainless steel tubing. I had, uh, I had a little piece laying there. It was a piece of stainless tubing, so I figured it would be kind of food safe. So I just, um, you know, cut two pieces like that to length. It was one by two by eighth inch wall, you know, the seamless tubing. And I just, um, you know, cut it to length. And then I had to drill a hole in the, um, the top member here, which I'm working on. And what I was going to do is I decided to just um, try to make a very simple press using some stainless steel threaded rod that I had laying around and a um, coupler nut that matched the threads on it and in the end it turned out that this is a little bit of a problem um, I wound up with a little bit of galling on the threads of the stainless in the end so probably I'm going to have to replace it with some uh, uh, Acme threaded rod and Acme nut in the future but uh, this is basically how I, I made the unit. And there I am turning down the coupling nut so it will fit into the hole in the top cross member of my press. And um, so there it is. And it's just, you know, one of those uh, three quarter inch coupling nuts. And I just put it through the hole and then I tack welded it on both sides just to hold it in place. Um, and that was a steel nut I tack welded to stainless, but I have found that you can weld it together. And there's a piece of the uh, threaded rod. It's a stainless rod that I probably should have never used because I never thought about the galling properties of stainless. And um, on my final press when making my wine, I ran into a problem. But um, And then there I just took a, another nut and welded it onto the end so I could drive it with just a socket. Uh, then I needed a couple of side plates to hold everything together. So I had some quarter inch sheet steel stock laying around left over. And I was able to squeeze my two plates into the, um, you know, the sheet of scrap that I had. So this is just the plasma table cutting that out. And it, um, you know, it makes it a real easy job. The plasma does a great job at cutting and um, it's fairly quick, it's fairly clean and it's uh you know has really good accuracy so it really helps out on projects like this yeah so as you can see you know i was trying to just build this from scrap that i had laying around so um you know it may not be the best way to build a press but in the end it really did um you know work out really good for my needs um so you know here we are just cutting out the two side plates that will later be um, you know welded just to give everything good rigidity when you're pressing and now I'm hoping in the end when this is all done that uh, this press will actually allow me to uh, press other fruits such as um, apples if I build a grinder for them and you know maybe even like pears or cherries and um, peaches or something like that just to uh, be able to get some just fresh fruit juice um, so here are the plates they're all cut out takes you know takes about two minutes to cut them and then I just fit them onto the ends of the tubing and got everything clamped together squared up and uh, the welds are kind of ugly but basically that's it I just welded around the um, edge there and uh, put the frame together then it was into the um, the CNC router. I had to draw up and program a uh, couple of parts to make for the press. And this first one was a piece of uh, UHMW sheet that I had that I was um, making a plate to go on the bottom of my um, press container. Now, for the press container, I I found an old spaghetti cooking pot that I decided to use. Um, you know, we had bought it years ago, and we never used the insert, so um, that's going to be my donor basket for this thing. And I just had to make a plate that would get it up in the air and um, 
give leave a spot for the actual juice to drain out from the holes in the bottom of it. So here it is, and um, as you can see, that UHMW is really um, really uh, nasty to machine. It just kind of melted together and stuff. But in the end, there it is. Um, just have to take an exacto knife to it, scrape all the burrs off it. And I think it really did come out pretty good, um, you know, for just being a plastic. And there's the uh, spaghetti strainer pot that it's going to go on. And, you know, basically it lines up with the holes and that will sit in the bottom of my um, press container. And allow the juice to run out from the um, both sides of the strainer there. Uh, then I needed a, basically a uh, plate to set the, um, you know, the press container on there. So I just had some ash, some nice flat ash laying around that I had cut and, you know, processed from my backyard. So I decided to use a piece of that and just, um, you know, route it out. And uh, this is just, just kind of, you know, a boring video of watching it be routed out. Yeah, having a uh, little CNC router really makes quick work of, um, you know, little parts like this. And um, probably could have made it quicker by hand if I, you know, had done it by hand. But I think it's a little more fun to uh, make it on the router. So there's the, um, the plate. And then I just, you know, I sand it down and put a little coat of finish on it there. And there's the press frame that I threw a little shot from a spray can of a uh, green paint on it. And um, I added a couple of taps in the tubing there to be able to screw this uh, bottom plate on to hold up the pressing bucket and keep everything flat. And there's the um, that other plate that I had cut, and there's basically how how it's going to work. Um, then I um, I needed a plate to actually go down and press on the bag full of the grapes. So I had a piece of um, old PVC. It's a clear, actually, I think it's a piece of uh, clear Lexian that I had um, it's probably 20 or 30 years old. It's been laying around in my shop, and um, I decided to use that. It was three quarters of an inch thick, so it's a real nice thickness. The only trouble was from being laying around so long, the... Um, that paper took about an hour to be able to scrape off and get it clean. So there I am just putting a little break on the, uh, the top edge of it there so that it won't get hung up on anything. And then I had a couple more parts to make on the router. Now this is just the, um, the legs that will go on each side to keep everything upright. So I put some pockets in so that the, um, the frame will lock right into it and keep everything from moving around. And this is just another one of those things where you sit back and you kind of watch the router do a job. Okay, so there's the, uh, the first leg. And then there's just one more to cut out and then there'll be some you know, sanding and cleaning up on them. And um, there's how they kind of snap onto the sides. And next I'm going to drill the mounting holes through the uh, metal uprights here. Um, and there you can see I had to cut down a Home Depot bucket to use for the press bucket. And that worked out pretty good. Someday I'll find a stainless pot, but for now that's, you know, going to work pretty good. Um, and there's the, uh, the little strainer sits in there with that plate on the bottom with the, uh, you know, the, all the grooves for the drainage. And then there's the, um, the the other plate that I made that sits in the top to press it. And I didn't show that orange piece being made, but that was just a matter of, uh, you know, plasma cutting another little round circle out and then welding a piece of tubing on it to contain the screw. So, you know, that all went pretty easy. So you just, you know, you load up the bucket and you put that top press plate on and you just set it in position there. There's a notch for the hose to come out of it. It started out as a hole, but I found it easier to just cut it out and make a notch out of it. And then you just, um, I'm going to just use a wrench to crank down on the threaded rod there to do the pressing. Now, as I said, I, you know, used it for pressing and the first couple of tries went really great. Um, everything worked great. 
But then on the last uh, batch of grapes that I was pressing, I did have some galling on that stainless shaft. So I'm going to have to, um, you know, that's about the only thing I'm going to have to rework. And I think I'm just going to pick up an Acme screw and nut uh, and replace it. So there you have it. You know, it's my simple grape press that didn't cost me a penny to make. So, and it seems to work pretty good. And I'll be showing, you know, I'll be using it in the next video making my wine this year. So, um, you know, just thanks for watching and please subscribe.